Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. I'd like to introduce you to Kim Robinson from Thousand Islands National Park. She joins us today uh, on our little tete to tete to talk about the national park and how they are working through this COVID crisis. So thank you, Kim, for joining us today. Can you tell us a little bit about the national park and what it has to offer a visitor? Uh, sure, yeah. Um, well, our offer is, uh, there are kind of two parts to our offer. We have an island offer, uh, which is used primarily by boaters and, you know, paddlers, kayakers, uh, which includes docks, mooring cans, uh, island trails, and other facilities that, you know, facilitate a visit to the islands, including overnight camping on the islands. Uh, and uh, we also have the mainland, which is um, a series of trails in a few different locations on the mainland. Uh, and also we have a visitor center at Mallorytown Landing, which is sort of smack dab in the middle of the park. The park sort of spans a broad area uh, in little bits and pieces between Brockville and Kingston. And at Mallorytown Landing, we have our, our visitor center and our base for operations. Is that open for um, regular visitors throughout uh, the year or is it certain times that it's open? Uh, we're open seasonally from the May long weekend until uh, Thanksgiving uh, and uh, our regular operations at the mainland operate until Labor Day, though we do still have some services that are running later this year. Uh, we still have our authentic accommodations, which are roofed accommodations, and they'll be open until Thanksgiving. Uh, and there will also be, if you still want to use the boat launch or the picnic area at, at the uh, visitor center, we won't have a person in the kiosk uh, later in September, but you would will still be able to, you know, pay for your boat launch and uh, and use the site for picnicking. Uh, can you tell the viewers um, what kind of safety protocols you might have in place if you were to visit the park? Sure. Um, luckily, because we are an outdoor setting primarily, uh, being a park, we've been very fortunate in COVID in that, you know, it is a perfect place for people to sort of get out and do something, but still do it very safely. Uh, but there are certain points, uh, I would say like juncture points or meetup points where we do need to take extra precaution. Uh, so we have done things like we have reconfigured our, our visitor center reception area so that we can safely interact with clients. So, you know, very much like those plexiglass uh, enclosures that you see in grocery stores. Uh, so we've had to sort of modify that. Uh, and uh, we also are taking some other precautions um, at, at certain points where people arrive in our places, like at our docks on the islands. Um, we've uh, been sure to make it uh, both a rule and also with our own uh, facilities like picnic tables, keeping those docks very clear so that people can enter them safely and, you know, and keep and maintain physical distancing when they're moving on those docks when they arrive on the island. Once you get on the island, there's room to spread around, but we've just been taking extra precautions at those sort of points of entry or places where things might get bunched up. Um, the other precautions we've been taking internally is with our own staff to modify that. Uh, we've been working in very tight little modified working groups or working pods. Uh, so, you know, a pair of island attendants will go out for the day and they've been together all summer. So I'm really glad to say they're all getting along fabulously. <laughs> well, that's excellent. That's good to hear. I know a few years back, uh, the park was infused with some some monies from the federal government. Um, I'm wondering about infrastructure on the island. Can you tell us about anything new that's happening in the future and, and what's happening now specifically? <laughs> Yes, well, in the islands, uh, we do have some new infrastructure, uh, particularly dock infrastructure uh, that has come online this year. Um, luckily, in a year where things might have seemed sort of gloomy, uh, we were well prepped to sort of welcome people who wanted to get outside and have, you know, sort of spaced outdoor experiences because we have a whole bunch of new docks that were just completed uh, for this season. So we were well equipped. Uh, we have been seeing, I would say, other boaters that, you know, aren't our, you know, 
aren't our regular boaters this season, you know, with people not being able to go to destinations, you know, on the other side of Lake Ontario, or maybe other facilities are closed. So, um, so we were well and ready to, to welcome them with a, a, a number of new docks that are resistant to flooding, uh, because we did take a real hit in 2017 with the high water levels, uh, which destroyed a number of our older crib docks. So, so there has been significant investment in docks. Uh, and looking to the future, uh, we, um, we're just wrapping up a visitor experience strategy that's guiding uh, future development and investment in new infrastructure for, uh, for visitors. And some of the emphasis there is uh, in providing uh, good ex access points for people. Uh, we've been historically very much a boaters park. That's still an important uh, piece of what we do for the Canadian public, but we're looking at ways that we can open it up a little more uh, for folks who don't own a boat, uh, you know, in terms of access to it, like a day use island experience uh, or more uh, experiences on the mainland, enhancing what we have, uh, renewing that sort of either short stop or overnight stay on the mainland so that you feel connected, you know, to the river and that island environment. Can you tell me a little bit about um, your hiking trails that are outside of the the park on the parkway? A little bit about that? Oh, yes. So outside of the, uh, we do have a number of trails on the islands, but on the mainland, we do have some really lovely trail experiences. Uh, one of them is Landon's Bay, which has pretty much, I would say, the best natural lookout of the islands. If you want to get a sense of, um, you know, how those islands dot the river, uh, you'll get it from Lannan's Bay at the lookout. There's a lovely lookout trail, which is only takes about 15 minutes to get to the top. Uh, so it's a, a good short stop trail to get a sense of what the Thousand Islands are all about. Uh, and then we also have a very extensive trail system at Jones Creek, uh, which is a little further east toward Brockville off of the parkway. And it, it's, it's a really lovely trail. Uh, it actually rests between the parkway and the 401. But when you're out there, you know, among the hemlocks and pines and, you know, uh, on a ridge above a beautiful wetland, you would never know that that's where you are. Uh, it's a really special place. Well, wonderful, Kim. Thank you so much for taking the time to to speak with uh, me today. I just want to say Kim is the Visitor Experience Manager at Thousand Islands National Park. And how does one reach out to you, Kim, if we need to, to get in touch for more information? Ah, okay. So you can reach out to us at the Parks Main Line, which is 613-923-5261. Uh, so you can reach out that way. Or um, if you want to uh, email us, you can reach us at aunt-ti uh, at, uh, oh, I think it's at canada.ca. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we just we just changed our email addresses within the last year or so, and so I think that's what it says. <laughs> Well, I appreciate, uh, you your time. I appreciate your time for, for, for talking with me today, and we'll be in touch soon, so thank you very much. Okay, wonderful. Thanks, Steve. It was a pleasure talking to you.